Uh, hey! We spoke about filling in the blanks earlier. Now, as you can see, it's a lot easier. Let's have another look. These are short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems, not just get stuck in the syntax guide. In this session, we're going to look at more of the classical problems made simple by the use of analytics. As Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Analytics is not just about doing analysis on data. It's not just about use for data warehouses. It's used in all sorts of situations. Here's today's classic problems. Grouping data into ranges. You might recall we've actually done this problem already. We had some lab samples taken on various dates, but we can see from the data that we actually missed some days. We didn't get some between the 4th and the 7th of December, etc. And the requirement was, show us the samples taken on groups of consecutive days. We wanted a result that looks like this. 1st to the 4th, 7th to the 10th, 14th to the 16th, and so on. We used a method which exploited the use of the row number function, which was the only one we'd learned at the time, to do the grouping. But it wasn't really immediately apparent how we went about doing it. So we're going to go back to first principles and see how we can use analytics to build up our logic flow to solve this problem. So here's our lab samples. First thing I'm going to do is look at logically how do we want these data to be grouped. We can see it's 1 to 4, 7 to 10, etc. What's the definition of consecutive? It's when the next date is one more than the previous date. So let's do that first. Let's look at the lag of the date taken compared to the previous one. When I look at that, I start to build up my understanding of how these ranges are going to fall into place. If there's a difference of only one day between the lag and the next day, then that's a consecutive day. That's a consecutive day as well. But when I get from the 7th down to the 4th, that obviously means there's been a break in the days. That's my first inclination that maybe that's a day of interest. So now I'm going to use a case statement to only populate a column called low val when that difference is greater than 1. But I'm starting to build up my logic of where the gaps are. I can actually see my result, it's just not in the format I want. I can go from the 1st to the 4th, to the 7th to the 10th, 14th to the 16th and so forth. We've got gaps in that low vowel column. We've done a, an example before on how to fill in gaps, so we can use that knowledge now. Let's use the max with a window clause to fill in the gaps of our low vowel. Now we can see we've populated all those nulls all the way down the page. I can start to see now I've actually got my answer, it's just tucked away in some of the details. There's the 1st to the 4th, there's the 7th to the 10th, and there's the 14th to the 16th. Thinking about this slightly differently, what I'm actually got is for a given low val, in this case 1st of December, what I want is the lowest value for date taken and the highest value for date taken, and that's going to be my range. To get the max and the min for a given value, I don't need analytics, I just need a normal group by. If I take my query there, wrap it once more in another inline view with a simple min and max and a group by, and there's my answer. We built this up over a number of iterations. So you can see, we're using the basic analytic functions we've built up over a number of previous videos to come up with a simple solution to a quite complicated problem. You can run these yourselves by clicking on the Light SQL link below. In the next session, we'll continue on looking at more classical problems made simple. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.